Hey friends, this is Rick Renner reading the June 2024 teaching letter. Dear friend, surprisingly, we recently woke up in Moscow to a fresh blanket of snow. And when I saw it, I thought about how the blood of Jesus, like snow, washes away and covers all the sin and blemishes in our lives. I am so thankful for the blood of Jesus, and I know that you are too. But before I get into today's letter, I want to remind you that my new book, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, is available on our website for a significant pre-publication discount. And amazingly, I also have a second new book available right now called Renner A to Z, and it covers my comments and quotes on more than 400 Bible topics. And really, I'm excited about both of these books. So please go to our website at renner.org to find out more information about these two new releases and order your copies today. I also want to say thank you for being such a faithful partner and friend with our ministry. In the last month's letter, I encourage you to keep sowing your precious seed for the sake of eternity. The sowing of our finances into churches and ministries is essential because it really puts fuel in the tank so the gospel and the teaching of God's word can get to people who need it. And every single time you give to a life-giving church or ministry, you are literally becoming a significant partner in providing help to people who really need it. God thanks you. I personally thank you for being such a mighty tool in the hands of God. And because of your willingness and obedience, lives really are being touched and changed. And I call you a partner because you really have an eternal part in what's being accomplished through this ministry. The Lord, Denise and I, our family and our whole team are thankful for every seed you have sown and will continue to sow into this soil of God's kingdom. And together, we're making a difference in lives all over the world that are crying out for teaching they can trust. Wow. It is such a blessing that God uses all of us together as a team. But today I'm thinking of people who've sown their seed into the soil of their churches and good ministries, and now they're waiting for a return or a harvest on what they have sown. And sometimes people get discouraged because during the time of waiting between the seed sown and the harvest reaped can sometimes take a while. So today I want to encourage you not to quit before you've received what you've been expecting. You can rest assured that if you don't give up, God certainly won't fail to perform His word for you. Galatians 6, 9 promises, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. This verse has been a strong encouragement to me personally over many years. So today I want to look at seven key words in this verse that I believe are going to encourage you. Let's take a closer look at the following words. Number one, weary. Number two, well. Number three, doing. Number four, in due season. Number five, shall reap. Number six, if. And seven, faint. But let's begin with number one, which is the word weary. The word weary in Greek is the word in kakeo. It's a compound of the Greek words in and kakos. The word in, in this case, means to give in. And the word kakeo is a form of the word kakos, a word frequently used to denote something that is evil, destructive, or even unjust. But when these two words are compounded, the new word depicts one who is tempted to give up because he feels accosted by an evil, destructive, or unjust person or circumstance. This means God commands you and me not to surrender to the temptation to become weary and to give up. He is the one who tells us, let us not be weary in well-doing. This leads us to word number two, the word well. The word well is the Greek word kalos, and it means good, but it would be better translated here as useful. The word good itself is too broad a term and leaves one wondering what's included. But when it is more accurately translated as the word useful, it gives clarity that a good work is a useful work. This, of course, suggests that in addition to useful works, there are also works that are unuseful, meaning a lot of energy and time expended on things that have no benefit to anyone. But Paul's use of the word callous 
tells us that we must focus on works that are useful with some type of measurable results. This tells us that what is sown is not only financial seeds, but also good deeds. Giving to the kingdom of God is one of those good deeds that God deems so valuable. But then we come to word number three, which is the word doing, which is a form of the Greek word poieo, and it refers to any type of activity. It can even carry the idea of creatively doing something when the action doesn't come easily or naturally. In other words, if we can't easily see a way to do something that's beneficial, it's time for us to get creative. But it must be noted that this word as used here is also a participle, and that's important because it depicts ongoing, uninterrupted action. In other words, this type of well-doing that the Apostle Paul described here is not a one-time event, but an ongoing action. It is a lifestyle of sowing seeds and deeds. And this leads us to number four. God promises that in due season, we shall reap a harvest of our efforts. The words due season in Greek are idios and kairos. The word idios means its own, and the word kairos refers to a set season. Thus, each seed has its own set season, a specific individual time when it will produce a harvest. Even if multiple seeds of different kinds are all planted at one time, each has its own season to be reaped depending on the nature of the seed. One seed produces during one set season, while another seed is reaped during a different season. Thus, it's a mistake to judge our seed and its particular time of harvest by the harvest time of other seeds, because each seed has its own unique set season to mature. We just need to remember God's promise that if we're consistent, if we steadfastly keep sowing our seed into the ground and refuse to allow weariness to derail us, a time will come when we shall reap. And this is the next word we're going to cover. The words shall reap are from the Greek word therismos, a Greek word that describes the reaping or harvesting of crops. And what's important to note is that the tense describes a future fixed event. Hence the harvest is in the future, but it is a fixed and guaranteed event that will happen if we will do our part and stay on course. And this is why Paul continued by saying, if we faint not. And this leads us to the word if. The word if tells us that our actions have the power to disrupt a harvest. Paul added the word if to help us understand that our consistency and refusal to surrender for any reason is vital in reaching the set season of our seed. If we faint at any point along the way, we can jeopardize the long-term harvest of what we have sown. And this leads us to the word faint. The word faint is the Greek word ek luo, which is a compound of the words ek and luo. The word ek means out, and the word luo means to loosen or to relax. But when compounded, the new word means to loosen out. It is a relaxed mental state that results in loss. It pictures a person who's become so weary that he gives up and forfeits what he had long awaited for and was so close to reaping. And as a result, the person loses the desired outcome that was once so near. Pressures applied against this person have unraveled him causing his grip to slacken until the answer he was holding on to slips from his hands. The result is loss. In the case of Galatians 6, 9, he has lost a harvest. The most common factor that causes us to loosen our grip is when we become weary. Thus, Paul urges us not to give in and quit in times of spiritual, physical, or mental exhaustion. It's exciting to plant seeds of faith, and it's really exciting when the harvest finally comes. But to reach that point, you must hold tight to what God has told you and remember that your seed, whether it's financial seed or seeds of uninterrupted, useful deeds toward others, all of them have a set season when it will produce if you do not disrupt the process. As long as you stay the course, it is guaranteed you will reap a harvest from what you've planted. Often people are tempted to give up and quit just because they get tired. Although they're trying to be obedient, they may feel unappreciated or perhaps circumstances 
out of their control are coming against them or someone is treating them unjustly. Maybe you have experienced the temptation to give up. But Galatians 6, 9 urges you and me not to loosen our grip on our future fixed harvest. You see, if you will remain steadfast, the time of waiting will eventually end and your harvest will come. It may not come at the time you were hoping it would come, but regardless, don't give up on your seed too early. The seed you have sown has a sad season and God promises it will produce if you don't do something to disrupt the process. I don't know what you're trusting God for in this present season in your life. Most of us are believing for something and we're sowing seeds toward it. Perhaps no one knows what you're believing for because you've kept it between you and the Lord. Or maybe it's a financial harvest, a breakthrough in a relationship, a physical healing, or a restoration in some other area. Maybe this harvest is taking longer than you anticipated. But I want to reassure you that God's word and his promises are eternal and that if you just won't quit, it's only a matter of time until your long-awaited blessing arrives. God's word is absolutely true. So I encourage you to remain steadfast and keep thanking him for the harvest he has set in store that's been tailor-made just for you. I appreciate you praying for Denise me, our whole family, and our team as we do what God has commissioned us to do. The assignment is absolutely enormous, and we're giving our best to do what He has assigned to us. But your prayers and your finances are a big part. So we ask for your prayers and thank you for your amazing support. Every day when I wake up and every night when I go to bed and multiple times during each day, I'm praying for God to respond to you with his very best. And if you have a specific prayer request, please let us know so we can pray specifically for you. I think you know by now that we're a ministry that really prays for our partners. It would be our honor to pray specifically for whatever is on your heart or whatever it is that you're facing in your life right now. We fully understand the need to have people who will come into agreement with us and pray with us. So we want to pray with you with full faith for God to move mightily on your behalf. We are your brother and sister, friends and partners in Jesus Christ, Rick and Denise Renner, along with Paul, Philip and Joel and their families and our whole ministry team.